everybody, this is chapter one, uh, sec, chapter eight, section one, sorry. Okay, so um, this is a, a kind of an introductory to adding and subtracting polynomials. And polynomials are, are uh, multi-term uh, expressions. They're, they're not always equal to anything, so they're just expressions. And there's just a bunch of vocabulary that we need to have for, um, for this particular section, these different things. So um, what I'm going to have you do is try to write some columns here and be able to uh, kind of go with me here. Once again, if I'm going too fast, just make sure that you, um, you know, pause it and then hit play uh, when you get caught up, okay? So we, we have all these different um, expressions here. We've got this, just a number, 12. Here we have a number and then a variable. And here we have multiple variables and a number, okay? So we're gonna talk about different things. Standard form is a term that you're gonna hear a lot in, in the math that we kind of go do from here on out and then other math classes that we do. It's just a certain way things have to be written. A degree of a polynomial is usually looking at the, at, um, the variable that's in the problem and looking at their exponential values. So um, we'll talk about that. And there's some differences in that too. We have names for certain things. It's really um, coming from the biggest degree or the largest um, exponent that's in the expression. Number of terms is how many terms in the expression that are separated by plus signs or minus signs. And then we're gonna have specific names for those, okay? So let's get started here. You should have these columns. Um, if you could write these, we have a couple more expressions here to get, get going with, okay? So 12, just the just any old number. So it could be 12, negative five, or a million, whatever. Standard form of a number is as it's written. So just a number by itself is in standard form. It has a degree of zero. Okay, that's that, and really degree is, is the power of an exponent. And so in this case, that number is not, um, is, doesn't have a, a variable in it. So there's no degree depending on the variable. It only depends on the variable we give it a degree. Um, this is a, um, a, a number just by itself is a, hold on a sec, I don't know, good stuff going on here. Just a moment. Okay, sorry. Uh, the name for just a number by itself is a constant. Let's see if I can get to my board here to figure out what it wants to do. Okay, here we go. Constant. There is one term in this, just a number, and this would be a monomial. Okay, mono means one. All right. Okay, so that's. The number is just a regular constant. That's kind of the name for a number by itself. Um, when we're looking at this one, the next one, eight plus seven X, we always want to make sure the variable goes first for standard form. So I'm going to rewrite this as seven X plus eight, okay? Now you're going to look at the variable. If we go back to chapter seven, chapter seven Every exponent or every uh, variable has an exponent of one. So its degree is one. It matches the power, okay? This is gonna be um, linear. It's gonna represent a line. We go back a couple chapters, you know, we had slope and the, and the starting point, stuff like that. There are two terms in that one. Seven X and eight are separate terms, so there's two. And this is known as a binomial. Okay. Binomial. Bi means two. All right. This next one, looking at it, we have three terms, but I'm going to go find the biggest exponent. There's a two there. Remember, there's a one on that. So I'm going to rewrite it with the biggest exponent first. So y squared, followed by the next biggest exponent. In this case, it's a one. And then I'm going to have that constant or the negative four at the end. Okay. So the biggest degree here, now degree is really, um, you're going to look at same uh, variables here. If the variables are the same, you take the biggest degree. So that's a two. Okay. And this one has a name of quadratic. 
And quadratic to me, quadratic means four, or quad does at least, but in this case, the quadratic is describing the graph that you get on this. And this is, if when we graph this stuff, it's going to either look like a U or an upside down U when we do it. So it really comes from what the, the graph of that would look like, okay? In this case, there are three terms, the y squared, the 2y, and the negative fourth, and that's called a trinomial. Okay, so three terms. Okay, so lots of that, that vocabulary there is really uh, going to come back and we're going to need to use a lot. So it's really important that you know these names and what they mean. Okay, if you go back to this next one, you know, uh, writing it in standard form, all the variables have to be first and then they all have to be in like descending order of their power. So I've got a power of three, a power of two, and I got this power of one over here, but I'll need to flip these two, okay? So in standard form, the biggest uh, power of the variables first, followed by the next one, so the two, followed by the next one, so x to the first, and then any constants always go last, okay? The biggest, all the variables are the same, so the biggest one is the three, okay? And the, uh, the name that goes with that is cubic, okay? In this case, there's four terms, okay? So we had three with variables and then a constant negative one. And we, once we get past trinomials, just the number of terms, so this has four terms, okay? Okay, this last one, the, the biggest power of the variable is that, so that's going to come first. Don't worry about the negative sign in front of the nine, it's not going to matter. There is no three, but there is a two. Okay, and then I had a constant of seven, there was no uh, power of one. Okay, so the highest degree here is a four, and we just say anything past three, we just say in this case the fourth degree. Okay, in this case, there were three terms, and going back to that name, it was a trinomial. Okay, so uh, a nice little graph. We've got a bunch of vocab that you're going to need to have. I um, just want to make sure that we, we get that down, so you're going to have to study this a little bit more and make sure you, you have this stuff down, okay? So we're going to go ahead and write these four examples down in problem number one, and we're going to name its degree. Okay. So if you don't, if it has a variable and you don't see a power, remember there is a one that exists right there. Okay. So this is has a degree of one. Okay. And this is a monomial. It's got one term. Okay. Uh, the name for uh, something to the first degree is linear. Okay. And I'm giving you some extra here just because it's nice to know that. All right. Okay. Um, this next one, it has a something to the uh, power of seven. So that's its degree. Uh, we don't have a name for that. So we just say it's to the seventh degree instead of saying linear like we did in the last one. And this was a monomial, only one term, okay? And I'm, I'm just doing this because I want you to have kind of an idea, um, uh, remember what these names are, stuff like that. Okay, now this next one, the negative three x squared y to the third, I have different variables here. So when you have different variables in your expression, you want to add the, the exponents and that gives you your degree, okay? So this is to the, you know, two plus three is five. So this is to the fifth degree, okay? Um, there is, the, and, and its degree is five, sorry. It's to the fifth degree, and this is a monomial again, okay? Remember, you're between monomial, binomial, and trinomial, and so forth, it's, there, you have addition, subtraction signs in there. We don't have that, so it's still a monomial, all right? Uh, for any, just a number by itself, its degree is zero. It's called a constant. And 
and it would be a monomial by itself. Okay. All right. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and uh, look here at this one. And problem two, if you want to write down, there's four examples right here. One, two, three, and four. Okay. Actually, I'll probably go one, two, three, and four here. Okay. All right. Similar to something we learned about in exponents, but it's not. So we just got to um, uh, kind of remember some of the things we did with exponents, but we're going to learn some new rules that go with it. First off, this x squared is a base, and the bases are the same. That means I can put them together, and it has these numbers called coefficients, the 3 and the 5, okay? Now, since I'm adding them together, I can only add them together if the bases are the same and the exponents are the same. So in this case, that's true. So I'm just going to go ahead and add the coefficients. That gets me 8, and it's x squared. So I'm not going to change anything with the exponents or the base. I'm going to keep them the same. I'm just adding or, in some cases, subtracting the polynomial, the, the coefficients in those, okay? All right. So you go... Go look at number two, there's, you know, it's 4x to the third, and here it's 1x to the third y. Okay, so these, that's the bases, and if they're the same, which they are, x is to the power of 3, y is to the power of 1, I can go ahead and just add these. So I'm really just adding the two coefficients, 4 and 1, gives me 5x to the third y. So x to the third was the same power, y to the first is the same power, I'm able to do that, okay? All right, this next one gets a little tough. We need to make sure that if I have something that's similar in different places, I, I'm going to look at them and see if can I put them together. So the rule is, you know, the x has a power of 2 here, and x has the power of 2 there. I can put those two together, so 4 the coefficient 4 and the coefficient 2 gives me 6x squared, okay? I have a 6x to the first and a negative 9x to the first. That means they're the same, so I can add their coefficients together. So in this case, really, you know, 6 and negative 9 is going to give me a negative 3x to the first. And then I have a constant 7 and a constant 1. So 7 plus 1 is 8. Okay, and that's in standard form. We always kind of want to look at, if I put it back in standard form, the biggest exponents are 2, followed by the next exponent of 1. So they're in descending order, and the constant went last. Okay, so I'm going to look at the last example here, and I'm going to go ahead and look for the biggest exponent. I found an exponent of 3. And it's y to the third. And over here in this parentheses, I have a negative 6y to the third. So the exponents are the same. The base is the same. I can add these together, but really, you know, 3y to the third and negative 6y to the third gives me negative 3y to the third. Okay. I, I have an exponent. I had an exponent of 3, so I'm going to go look for a 2. Sometimes I have it, sometimes I don't. Well, in this case, I do. I have a power of 2 here and a power of 2 there, so I can put those two together. 7y squared and 2y squared gives me 9y squared, okay? So the, the powers were the same, lets me put them together, but I didn't change them. I kept them whatever they were, all right? I then have, I look for, you know, my next power would be a 1, so I do have a term here and a term there that have a power of 1. They're the same, so I can go ahead and add their coefficients. So 5 and 7 gives me 12y to the first. Okay. And I'm looking at that. The next thing I could have after something to the first power would just be a constant or just a plain old number. In this case, I do have this negative 9. So minus 9. It was kind of all by itself. Okay. All right. So adding, adding them is pretty easy, I think. You know, the big thing is don't change the exponents on these. You're putting exponents together that are the same. 
So just look for them, but keep them as they are, okay? So you're looking at uh, problem number three and subtracting them. Now this, this one kind of can give kids some problems. So we've got to really make sure that we uh, uh, pay attention to this, take good notes, you want to add some note, notes to yourself to kind of help you, all right? I have a four X to the third Y and I have a one X to the third Y. So the, the X's have the same power. The Y's both have powers of one. So that means I can put them together, but now I'm subtracting the coefficient. So I want to subtract the four and the one. So I get three X to the third Y. Okay. All right. Now what happens here, I'm going to kind of ignore this first one here. Okay. What I want to do is I want to take this negative sign out here. We like to pretend there's a negative one there. And that means I distribute it all the way through everything in that parentheses. So now it becomes a negative 7m to the third, positive 9m to the first, and then a negative 6. So we've got to make sure we make those changes with that. Now that's a rule that we've had, you know, really since the beginning of the year. We've got to remember it. And, and I, I'm going to do that first because it's important that I, I don't mess that up. Okay. So now I'm going to go back and try to put stuff together. I'm looking at powers. I have a power of four right here. Okay. That's the biggest one, but I don't have any other power of four in my problem. So I'm just going to have to rewrite that. Okay. I had a power of four was my biggest. So I'm going to say, now let's go find a three. Well, here's a three right here. But that's, again, the only one I got. Now, remember, I changed the sign, so I have to rewrite it, but with a negative sign, 7m to the third, okay? I then have, uh, my next one would be a 2, and I do have uh, something to the power of 2 right here. But once again, that's the only one I got, so I'm just going to rewrite it, okay? And then I go to a power of 1, so I have a... a power of one there and a power of one there. This is a negative 8m. This is now a positive 9m to the first. So really subtracting those or adding those, I'm going to get 1m or positive 1m to the first power. Okay. I then have, and then after first powers, I have constants, anything that's a, not a number without a variable. So I have a negative 7 there and a negative 6 here. So negative 7, negative 6, gets me a bigger negative number, negative 13, okay? So one thing, I, you know, going back, um, look at the order, the descending order of all my exponents is correct, and whatever constant I had uh, ends up at the end, okay? Okay, so a lot there. Really important on that one is to make sure that you distribute the negative sign Throughout that second set of parentheses, you're going to get that a lot. It's just going to be really important that you make those changes, okay? All right. And then, you know, we like to put a negative one there and just multiply it through. Or if you're really good at it, you just, hey, I'm going to change the signs and, you know, I'll make sure I do it that way. So whatever way you're comfortable with, you're good at, do that, okay? All right. So that was section one. Uh, please make sure if you have any questions, you get a hold of me. Uh, please make sure you really work on your, your uh, classwork for that so that you can get um, some good practicing. Thank you.